to the film cast review of Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I'm David Chen here with Devinder Hardware and Jeff Kanata. I'm going to read the plot summary of Furiosa off of the internet, quote, snatched from the green place of many mothers. Young Furiosa falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementis. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across a citadel, presided over by the Immortan Joe. As the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa soon finds herself in a nonstop battle to make her way home. Hey, Dave. Yep. Before we get into this, can I just ask you a quick question? Yes. Is this title using the word saga correctly? <laughs> uh... Okay, saga. Um, a, sa- a, a Mad Max saga? A saga? I, I mean, guess. it's part of the is Furiosa it? saga. Oh, okay, hold, hold on, hold on. So, so in what way do you think it is not using it correctly, Jeff? Let's put it that way. Part of the Mad Max saga. It is. Or it's, it is a saga? It is a Mad Max saga? A Mad Max saga. Is a saga a subset of something? I feel like a saga by definition, can't be a subset. Uh-huh. I, why not? There, there are sagas within sagas. I suppose. You know? yeah. yeah. I'm just asking. I, I personally think it's just a uh, very sort of... Stylized. Bra- brazen marketing tactic. I like, mean, of a way to describe these movies, which there's no connection to the early Mad Max movies, except right. the idea of Mad Max, you know? Right. Um, somebody watched the uh fast saga uh f9 the fast saga and was like that's genius like mm-hmm. somebody well, saw f9 the fast saga it was like <laughs> that's how we're going to title the next but it's not that's how we're going to do it a fast saga it's not one of the fast sagas <laughs> i'm just asking because you're the guy who gets mad at punctuation and titles and i feel Absolute, like oh, you'd absolutely. have my back on this it's I, I think it's a great question jeff it's just more like i had already mm-hmm. mentally made peace with the fact that they're not going to use saga correctly a long time ago so i think i'm just like <laughs> I, I, I don't like disagree. semicolon i don't even <laughs> disagree with you i'm just like in a point yeah. now right. where i'm like oh i already moved on from that and you know? in All the right. movie what pops up on screen is just furiosa i don't think it says right. a mad max saga on screen Mm, so th- yeah, there's usually marketing sure. title versus real title. Yeah, so yeah, 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 that yeah, often, yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry. All right. Carry on. No worries. Uh, Kurt, if you're watching this and cutting the YouTube video, let's start here. <laughs> no, Hard- not, but this is content. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is absolutely content. Devendra Hardwar, what did you think of Furiosa, a Mad Max saga? Arguing about titles is quality film cast content. Come on. That's what people are here for. I learned um, it by watching you, Dave. Sorry, go I, on thought this movie was a goddamn masterpiece and it's really hard it's even i I thought it was going to be good i'm a huge george miller fan even of the movies that people don't like very much i think the guy is like a cinematic genius a wonderful visual stylist i think he's a myth maker of the greatest degree and this movie truly shows that and i love that it is so different than fury road you know we waited so long for fury road and what fury road was was essentially, what if I could make a chase scene the entire movie, right? Like, essentially, mostly action, limited dialogue, just really getting to the heart of narrative, which is something he's been trying to do with the Mad Max series, basically from the beginning. He was, like, the idea between him and his collaborators was like, what if we could just make a movie with the good stuff? You know, like, the good action, the really good scenes. That's Mad Max and Road Warrior. Um, Less so Beyond Thunderdome, but I have fun with that movie, too. this is so different. You know, guys, I have been reading um, Greek mythology with my daughter. She's getting really into it. She's watched me play some Hades. She's like, who's this god? What's what's their deal? Uh, oh, the sun god. That's cool. And she's just seeing the way they look and the way they talk and they talk about their power. So I've been reading to her mythology and she's like, this is so cool. Why do we have these ideas? And I'm like, once upon a time, We didn't really understand science to explain the world. So we came up with these ideas, these mythologies to explain the world and also, you know, to just help us understand like how things actually work. And that's essentially, it's what it feels like George Miller is doing here. Um, These movies were always about what if society fell apart? You know, the first Mad Max was almost like on the precipice of falling apart. It's really weird to rewatch the first Mad Max now because there's a lot of like, it's like mostly a functioning society. You hear about wars in the background and stuff and uh, potentially nuclear war, um, but it feels normal. But it also feels like things are about to fall apart. And uh, Road Warrior, Beyond Thunderdome are full on. We are in 
post-apocalyptic yeah. mode, like society has fallen. Fury Road, the same deal. He all it always feels like his stories are about like what truly makes us human. How do we find hope when things are absolutely hopeless? And I think that is the core of what Mag Max always was, in addition to being like kick-ass action movies. But he's always had a humanist heart to it. And I think Furiosa just really hits that home for me. You know, Fury Road had a lot of this, but Furiosa is this epic saga. This is her saga from childhood of what ripped her away from an idyllic land, um, the powers that took her away, the people that took her away, the way her life was shaped by loss and by vengeance and the need for all these things. I, I think it's just fascinating. Like this is myth making at, at a high level. And in Fury Road, Mad Max was Mad Max is almost like a myth, right? Because it's not even the original Max. It feels almost like a reinterpretation of Mad Max. So I just found this movie to be incredible. He is a myth maker. George Miller, more power to him. I can, I was almost planning to see this movie again before we did this mm. review this morning. I love this thing. And how lucky are we to get like two incredible stunt build action films within a couple of weeks of each other? Amazing. Jeff Kanata, your thoughts on Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Well, Dave, I guess you could say my thoughts on Furiosa, a Mad Max saga are best <laughs> summed up in the form of a limerick. All right, let's hear it. A sequel familiar and new with action and backstory too. Let's not go burying this octogenarian. George Miller, I'm witnessing you. <laughs> nice, Jeff. Nicely done. It turns out there's something to be said for experience, mm. something to be said for endurance, something to be said for having been around and thinking about things and, and honing your craft over decades. Guy can make a good movie. The guy can make <laughs> a good movie. Uh, I... I'm just going to basically say all the same things Devendra said. It is uh, incredible. I watched this. Uh, I woke up the morning of my screening for Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. <laughs> and uh, I watched Fury Road that morning. I mm, uh, nice. hadn't watched it in a couple of years. Holy hell, that movie is just exquisite. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, you know, BJ Clangelo. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, our friend BJ Clangelo had mentioned to us off uh, mic that she thought this was better than uh, Fury yeah. Road. I'm not prepared to make that claim. Uh, I just think the sort of the purity of Fury Road, the 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 sort of um, the trimming of any extraneous thing. Other, you know, yep. as Devendra pointed out, that you know Miller himself talks about Fury Road as action as dialogue. Yes. Like mm -hmm. in, in, instead of dialogue, we have these action yes. beats, but they're meant to do the same function as dialogue. And that's just an extraordinary thing. It is. It it feels to me like a distillation of something, a a the the purest form of something. And so I'm not prepared to say that Furiosa is better, or I liked more than Fury Road. I think Fury Road still stands at the peak of what action filmmaking can be for me. But as a sequel to that, as a follow up to that, as Hey, I'm not going to just try to do the same thing again. I'm yeah. going to actually explore new elements of that, include world building and fill in. I mean, it was, I thought it was a really interesting experience seeing those movies so close together, like literally the same day I watched them. And evidently, the script for Furiosa had been written before Fury Road was mm -hmm. filmed. So all of the stuff we find out about her exists in the DNA of Fury yeah. Road. Like it's all there. And I think that is, that's an amazing thing as well. I mean, not even Star Wars has that, right? We, <laughs> Luke and Leia kiss in the new hope, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> George didn't think he was going to tell you they were brother and sister at that point. <laughs> Sometimes the blinks kiss, you know, sometimes yeah. you have to retcon some stuff because you're making <laughs> another movie now. I mean, George uh, Miller said he can explain the doof warrior to us. Like from, what his deal is, his whole life, he yeah. knows the story. So it's yes. an extraordinary. Love it, it, him. The, the level of density of the world building is on display here. And I think because he's expanding beyond just action as dialogue, which again, 
absolutely love. But but because a lot of this movie is dialogue as dialogue is you know is it, it, smaller moments um, a different pace uh, there it, it we're able to kind of investigate a lot of those places and people that we saw in Fury Road. I honestly think this is one of the rare prequels that if you watched first doesn't harm. Mm -hmm. the other movie like it yeah, actually yeah. could work watching it in chronological order it almost of... feels like it's designed yes. to be watched that way mm -hmm. yeah it's it, it, it's very much a like some people have said first of all i one of the first things i did after i finished watching this movie is go back and rewatch Mad Max Fury road and i think mm -hmm. like you want you kind of want to experience them together um but it is possible to read mad max fury road as an extended coda of this movie. You yes. know, like that's, that's how close they are kind of connected in terms of the DNA. So, yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And, and it, it, it I, I'm just going to keep blathering about how great this movie is. I mean, there is, if what you are going to see or hoping to see is Fury Road level action, you get it. Yes. You get yes. it. There is in particular one extended, I don't know, probably 10, 15 minute long sequence in this movie that is as good as anything in Fury Road. It is, and there are new ideas. There are just right. like jaw dropping visual things. There's stunt work that is on par with anything you saw in Fury Road. There's just the way he visualizes action, the way he comes up with these audacious things we've never seen before. I mean, that's that's walking out of Fury Road the first time I saw it. I just couldn't believe mm -hmm. how many new things I had witnessed. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like he does that again. It, you know, it was not a mistake that the first line of my limerick was familiar and new. It feels like it's of the same material, but fresh, still fresh, still interesting, still got new things to throw at you. So you're, you are going to get that visceral, high octane, balls to the wall, edge of your seat thrill. But also there's all this other stuff that infuses the world with so much more information and context. I, this movie is phenomenal and mm -hmm. I, I loved it and can't wait to watch it again. I also want to say it is, you got to see this in theaters and at a packed screening if you can like uh, <laughs> dave and i we went to a press screening but it was a full house it was and one, like 100 percent full yeah yeah the mine was too of yeah leaning in like when things just start going and everybody just like adjusts and we're like ho oh, oh, ho we're, we're doing this now yeah. this is interesting and george miller even talks about that in several interviews like he wants to create a thing that makes you want to pay attention and fully engage with what's going on screen and you see it you physically see it. it was like everybody shifting to another gear. You're not just like laying back, you know, and passively watching what's here. You are watching the movie. You are fully engaged with this movie. And it's fascinating to see a whole crowd lean in at the same time. Most movies don't make you do that. I also really like this movie. Uh, I think it's really good. And you should, you should definitely go watch it in the theater and see it with as good sound and as many people as possible. Um, strongly recommend. I think like one of the biggest compliments I can say about this film is it does the things that I usually hate about prequels, mm -hmm. which is, you know, there's that famous Pat Oswalt bit where he says, I don't care about where the stuff I like came from. I just like the stuff I like, you know, and what do we, do you need to know how Furiosa became the person that she was in Mad Max? Do you need to know where she got, you know, some of the stuff that she got, some of the, the stuff that's on her person, you know, and all that stuff and, and why she's motivated to do the mission. You know, uh, when I'm watching Mad Max Fury Road, my answer is no, I don't need to know all that stuff. Right. And this movie answers a lot of those questions. Like what does the green place look like? You see that in the trailers. Um, and usually I don't like that stuff, you know, Spoiler, usually it's green. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, usually very like green. that stuff is pretty irritating. And one thing I like about this movie is that, Hey, like they, they put a decent amount of thought into what these backstories components are. And they put the stuff in this movie that I think helps to enrich the character that we see in Mad Max Fury Road. Right. So that, 
is, is the biggest, like that is in my opinion, the movie's biggest obstacle. And I do think it overcomes it uh, for the most part. And, and so uh, yeah, a huge shout out for that. You guys have talked about the action. I think some of the set pieces are really good. It is, you, you I, I think I just needed to like, calibrate my expectations going into this film right like it is not mad max Fury road it is not like it structurally at all it is a movie that takes place in the same universe as mad max Fury Road. and so if you like that universe if you like the look of it the design of it you're gonna get a lot more of it in this movie and that's really exciting right and i was one of the people that was a fan of that how do cars look one of the things that george miller pointed out in his interview with uh, the new yorker i thought was interesting was all the cars that they use in this movie are from the 60s and 70s because they're or, you know, decades That's ago. That's when the world they're, fell. They're not going to. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's because they're not going to use um, computers. The, the ones that have like computer chips and stuff yeah. like I know the but ones they can't, that have, because yeah. the, this story started in the set like in the late 70s as we were approaching the 80s so that's also uh, why too. Yeah. yeah i mean he's also said that the timeline doesn't really matter like sure, the timeline sure, sure. doesn't really matter he doesn't really have a specific place how this fits into the yeah. mel gibson movies or anything like that but yeah that's fair um but yeah it's just like the the cars that use uh they're mechanical Siri, you know mm-hmm. they're yeah. not going to be the ones that you rely on to get you through the ap- post apocalypse yeah it's but a it, mechanical world it's yeah. not a it's not a digital world right mm-hmm. so the look yeah. of the world and and the other thing that was really important from Mem X-ray road that continues here is everything needs to have more than one purpose like if you're going to save something mm-hmm. it needs to be used for more than one thing so um something can be an item that you worship but it's also literally the physical wheel that you put in the car and so on and so forth so like the design of the world continues to be really cool and interesting and so on um and the action scenes also have some great ideas as you guys have discussed i'm one of the people that doesn't think the uh movie looks as good as Mad Max Fury Road. Um, There's more digital work, for sure. Yeah, Mad Max Fury Road had a lot it, of visual effects, too. So it's not that. like that mm-hmm. movie didn't have visual effects. Uh, I believe they shot this in a different location. In Australia. They did, Australia. In yeah. Australia, yeah. which not is Africa. where they had originally intended to shoot Mad Max Fury Road. And mm-hmm. then they had to change plans and go shoot it in Namibia. And I think that just gave it this distinctive quality that I don't think you really get with this movie. Uh, probably this movie was a lot easier to make and hopefully safer mm-hmm. to make for everyone. And I, I salute that. Um, Steven Soderbergh has his line of like, uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Like, I don't understand how they're not still shooting that movie. And I don't understand how the, everyone yeah. making it isn't dead. Um, and if this movie was a safer one to make, great. I love that. Uh, having said that, uh, I don't think it looks quite as good. Some of the scenes look really good, but like, some it, of just, the scenes. it just hasn't, there's just some quality that's lost between Mad Max Fury Road and this movie. But, I, I think what it is yeah. much more than the scenes themselves, because, hey, when that big storm comes in Fury Road, it's not a real storm, CG, right? right? That's a yeah. pure digital yeah. storm. It just looks really cool. But there are points where there are, it feels like there are CG models used for certain things, like um, characters jumping onto a horse or characters like climbing up a right, thing. Right. Like you can tell, and maybe they just didn't have as much time to work yeah. on it to actually produce that stuff too, so... Yeah, yeah, I just want to be 100% clear. I'm not saying, oh, Mad Max Fury Road didn't use visual effects and this one did. Like, yeah. I, they both use visual effects. Um, for Different. whatever reason, in my to my eye, they look better in Mad Max Fury Road. Maybe it's because they didn't have as much time to make this one. Maybe it's because of other decisions. But um, I do think that is something that is lost. Like, Jeff, you and I watched Fury Road recently. Like, it still looks freaking awesome. Like, it's virtually I, flawless in terms of I had of how the it looks. same reaction yeah. to this movie. I, I don't think it bothers me as much as it bothers you, but mm-hmm. I did see like some green screeny yeah, looking it, stuff. It just looks and, like it's like not, it looks like they shot on the volume as opposed to, you know, but whatever. In, but in some not, instances, I don't, I, it, doesn't, I don't, it doesn't kill it. It doesn't kill it right. or anything like that, but it's like, it just doesn't look quite as good. It still looks very cool. And, um, and George Miller still knows how to direct the hell out of an action scene. So it's like, ultimately, it doesn't really matter that much. Ultimately, it's great. But, yeah. um, but Mad Max Fury Road is just so singular that it's hard to agree. Agreed. Um, Agreed and I just want to give a shout out to uh, the performances in this movie, you know? Mm-hmm. Anya Taylor-Joy, she was apparently cast after George Miller saw her in Last Night in Soho. Fair. Uh, Jeff, you'll appreciate this. Miller, I'm reading here from IndieWire, Miller contacted Taylor-Joy to audition for Mad Max Fury Road uh, the prequel, sorry, during the pandemic, the actress was assigned the famous I'm mad as hell speech from Sidney Lumet's network. Oh, that's great. Quote. So that's how they auditioned Anya Taylor-Joy to be in this movie. And uh, she does a great job. I think she does a great job. Even in the trailer, you kind of get one point where it's like she's doing that Sidney Lumet speech. It feels <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It is hard to live up to Charlize Theron in that role. 
It is very I think she's very capable. We'll talk this about movie. this in spoilers because yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff here. I, will, I, yeah. I do want to say, like, it is fascinating. Like, I was prepared to love Anya Taylor Joy in this movie. I love Anya Taylor Joy in general. She is not in this movie as much as you would think. And I actually ended up loving a lot of the other folks, like Alila Brown, who plays the young Furiosa, which I th- who I think is like as a child has like a lot of spunk to her and energy. Tom Burke, who shows up as another sort of like uh, one road of the, warrior. the yeah. road warrior type characters. Like he, I was like, where did he come from? How did you? I've Unrecognizable this guy in, other in this movie. Uh, Tom Burke yeah. usually plays like real, like high society or high society esque people in British TV shows and yeah. films. Like he is, uh, uh, it's just like, didn't he play? It's, almost like, um, it's like Josh O'Connor from Challengers level transformation right. of like, wow, this guy's amazing. In this Did movie. he play um, in Mank? Wasn't he? Um, he was Orson Welles. Orson right? Welles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's what yes. I was like. Yeah. He's like, is Orson Welles driving a, that badass sure. car? Right yeah. Now? It's, it's, <laughs> ama- it's like amazing. He's got a lot of range. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you were going to say something about Anya Taylor. I, my only, honestly, my only criticism with this movie is I don't think I love what Chris Hemsworth was doing. Mm. Mm. Hmm. It's a minor thing because ultimately the movie is such a force of nature that it, I just got swept up in it and I loved it. But I, I, for the first like 20 minutes of this movie, I was getting real worried. I wasn't going to like it. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it ultimately doesn't become a big deal for me. Not enough to even sway the fact that I think this is one of my favorite movies of the year, but I kind of feel like he's in a different movie than everybody else. And it, I don't think it really worked for me. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. I I love Chris Hemsworth most of the time. And I love he's in he's that impossible thing where he's an Adonis who also can be funny. Like that shouldn't you shouldn't be able to have both of those things. Um, but I think he leans a bit in, too much into the comedy in, in this, and it I don't think it helped. Mm-hmm. the character mm-hmm. or the menace of the character. Uh, it's an interesting position that his, we'll get into it in spoilers, but it's an interesting position that his character takes in this film. Cause he's yeah. sort of not easily definable for a lot of it. Um, but I, I don't know how you guys felt about Chris Hemsworth, but I, 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 I didn't yeah. love it. I have thoughts to say about that too. I would say it reminded me of Jason Momoa in fast nine. Yes, maybe. Yeah. Or like, just like this person being high camp, when everybody else is like being a little more dramatic or just yeah. on a different gear. I, I liked it, but I will say, I think I was a little disappointed that it is just another dude in the desert that everybody follows. And the thing I love about George Miller, like he is always reshaping formulas and doing things. And maybe this is the point, like from the very beginning with Mad Max and the road warrior, I just rewatched Road warrior actually before this review, there's always a guy that the people will follow because he's charismatic or something. And that's ultimately what it is. It's charismatic men and resources and the downfall of society. And how do you keep your humanity within that? So I understand like why he is this way. And I think Chris Hemsworth had a lot of fun with the role. And I don't think it's doubtable, like how evil he is too. He's just having fun with it, but maybe there was room to do something a little different for for that. Cause I, across all these Mad Max movies, it is kind of the same idea and in Fury Road, we start to get to more different things and more unique things and maybe maybe mix it up a little bit. It worked for me. It worked for me. I'll say that. And I yeah. think we have more to say about it in the spoilers section. But uh, but yeah, I, I, it didn't it didn't bother me. But it was it did come close to the line, Jeff. It mm-hmm. was like mm-hmm. right up to the line of like, this is a little bit too much. Uh, there, there's and, at least yeah. one scene that's a little too extraneous. I think like, mm. why did that even happen? Yeah. Just just right. to be silly, and we'll talk about that in spoilers. Also, shout out to Charlie Frazier, who plays Mama yes. Furiosa, who is, where did she come from? She's so badass. This I is like her second her. movie, basically. Amazing. Yeah. Incredible. She plays Furiosa's mom, and she's ama- she comes out of nowhere. You don't know who yeah. she is. And she's amazing yeah. in this film. So yeah, yeah. shout out for, for sure. All right. We have more to discuss. So let's get to spoilers for Furiosa of Mad Max Saga starting right now. I think what's cool about Dementis as a as a concept for that character is mm-hmm. that there's kind of this nihilism, right, to that character. Like Immortan sure. Joe has a whole thing of I am the one you worship and I'm I'm gonna carry you to the gates of Ahala. He's also on. very smart in this movie too, which I thought right? was kind of fascinating. Like he has good strategy mind, you know? Whereas Dementis is like there's there's nothing here but brutality. 
Um, there is nothing here but me taking what I want. Uh, there is mm-hmm. no hope to be found here. Uh, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and I appreciated that it was like kind of a different slice of what that the kind of person that would mm-hmm. rise up in the post-apocalypse Bill, built on I'm a sh- sense of pathos too. Like there, there is something driving him and he's trying to equate himself a little to Furiosa. I was also reminded of uh, Lord humongous from road warrior who is very similar is the thing. Like uh, he is not as silly, but is same muscly man in a cool outfit uh, directing everybody with a sense of nihilism to him. Like the world has fallen. What do we do? Do you either hold on to your humanity or do you, toss it all behind to survive in the wasteland. And that is essentially what those characters do. Jeff, what were you going to say? I'm not entirely certain I agree with your assessment. I, I, I found at least in the first act of this movie, Dementis seems almost noble in his intention. And maybe that's a, mm. a lie, Yeah, you know, but I can ultimately he, be, he, he is revealed to be, you know, pretty nefarious character, but there is this notion that throughout the whole beginning is like, we should, we should all have this. St- Why does that guy have it up there? He's taking it from all of you. We should all share mm-hmm. in the re- wealth. I'll help protect you, but let's all rise up. And it felt like, Oh, this dude is actually kind of, you know, <laughs> a populist. <laughs> he's kind of a, he's well, kind of, you yeah, know, in the, in the worst, in the worst way, way it form. turns out. Yeah. But, but I, uh, it was an interesting line that the movie walked at the beginning of him. Like he, I don't think he's revealed as being evil, like the fruits of the devil. I mean, there's no, there's no mistaking Immortan Joe. The moment you see him as being a real bad man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Immortan I mean, he, Joe. he is keeping resources alive for this population under him. He is evil in the way he does it. But a lot of those, you could argue that Immortan Joe is the more benevolent ruler because he is keeping a lot of those people alive. Whereas, yeah, you're also introduced yeah. to uh, Dementis murdering Furious's mom in quite yeah. so, so, so brutal a fashion that they don't even show what he's yeah. doing to her. Right. So, you know, I, I think it, it's, it's all for show. It's all <laughs> right. for show, Jeff. But what right. is fascinating is uh, he reminds me of Proximus Caesar in the way from, uh, from mm. King of the Planet of the Ages. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. He wants to know things. He wants to be a learned you know, overlord yeah. in a way. Well, Proxima kind of Caesar way too. better as a leader than any of these people, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the one of the great things about this movie, in my opinion, is Furiosa is how incompetent Dementis is. Like he's yes, he yes. takes over Gastown, yeah. but has no idea how to run the place. He's just coasting on his charisma, yeah. uh, coasting on charisma, and his ability yeah. to rile up a bunch of uh, of people. I, I I, I can't possibly see how this is in any way relevant to any real world events. Or people. <laughs> yeah. um, I did. But, lo- that was a wonderful sequence when they finally arrive at gas town and he's just like, it's an anarchy. And he's just like, ah, <laughs> I don't know what even, why, what's going on? <laughs> and he's like so blaming good. other people. Like yeah, it's a great, great. portrait. You know, it's, it's just yeah. very different than Immortan Joe. And I, yeah. I appreciated yes. that about the yes. movie. Right. So, uh, and whether the, the specifics, you know, the way he uses his vocabulary, like all that stuff, it's, it's like a very, like, um, I can understand why that would be bothersome. He's also, just, I, I love how he's big into the symbolism of, of himself too. Like he gets uh, hit with the red dye. Oh, I'm Dementus the Red now. And I have, <laughs> I'm more of the people. And oh, you made me mad. I'm Dementus the Dark now. And uh, that's one of those things, right? As a society, we lead into symbols. Uh, that's how you rally entire peoples are, uh, together. There's an argument that flags have done tremendous harm to us as a society because it is a thing that you can rally towards. Um, that's kind of fascinating. I think he is a fascinating character, even if I wish um, he was a little different or a little more unique from some of the other Mad Max dudes. Speaking of uh, those flares, one of my favorite parts of the movie is something that's not even spoken, mm-hmm. uh, but I didn't know the flares had meaning to the like, colors had mm-hmm. meaning to them. And there's a moment when Praetorian Jack is in bullet town and uh, Furious is outside of Bullet Town, and he like takes this flare gun and fires it into the sky, and it explodes, and it's green. Mm-hmm. And she sees it, and like clocks that. Oh, she she understands. Oh, that means I can get out of here. And like no no one explains this to the audience. No one says. By the way, green means he thinks everything's okay. You know, like no one says yeah. it, but you just kind of get it as an audience. Um, there's just a lot of wordless storytelling in both of these movies. That's what George and, Miller does. Like, yeah, yeah and he, I think it's he, really. 
really effective. And, and then she kind of drives from away and then stops yeah. and then changes her mind and like comes back to help him. And that's a really effective sequence. So. I don't I don't even know if that green meant everything was okay. It's right. more just like, like you can go. Like you can go to the green place. Yeah, like that is whatever. essentially the only green we've sure. referenced in this entire story. And that is it. He's telling her to go. Yeah, he's and telling her can't. to go. Like, get out of here. Like, whatever it is, you mm-hmm. know, that's the thing. We don't even know yeah. what the actual interpretation is supposed to be, but like, you can read into any number of logical things. So, uh, so some of the stuff that we are explained in this movie, I have to say, I got a lot of. Uh, oh, we, uh, Davindra, you were talking about the person who plays the younger Furiosa. Mm-hmm. I think the the thing that I thought was coolest about that was. Mm-hmm. When they switched from that actor to Anya Taylor Joy, I didn't even realize it at first. Like, there's this transition. I think it's chapter three when we finally switch over to Anya Taylor Joy, mm-hmm. and she's wearing like you know kind of stuff over her face and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I-, I thought it was still the young actress, and then it took like a few minutes before I realized it was Anya Taylor Joy. That's how seamless the transition is. So I think they did a good job with that. But um, the whole time we see Anya Taylor Joy on screen, I have a lot of anxiety, guys, because. Um, Anya Taylor Joy in this movie, for a lot of it, has two hands, two arms, <laughs> and, yeah. and we know that she only has one hand by yeah. the time that Mad Max Fury Road happens. Well, they and tease so like, us with it with so many things, like yeah. her writing yeah. the map on her arm. I'm yeah, like, well, that's oh. she's gonna cut it off herself, so yeah. she doesn't have the map yeah. there anymore. And then she has that moment in, where she's sticking her arm out the door, and the wheel runs up on it. And she's like, ah. I was like, well, there we go. There's the, and then she pulls it in. She, it's okay. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was yeah. pretty clever. Well, no, they, that that wasn't an okay. Well, that crushed her arm. Well, and that was the point right. where she could be like, well, it didn't. Co- gotta I don't escape. Mean okay, but I, I, mean, I have mean, to escape. First of all, when yeah. Mad Fury Road came out, a lot of people thought she was uh, she was born without a, a, right. an arm, right. right? And so, right. Uh, so it's like, okay, uh, for this movie, they've now made up a story for how she lost the, the her left hand. Is it her left hand? I think it is. Her arm. Yeah, it's uh, her left yeah, hand. Her, her arm. arm from like yeah. this point de- for, down. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so the, 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 the question I had is, is that story worth it? Turns out she was trying to flee Dementis with her companion, Road Warrior Praetorian Jack, uh, got it crushed up against the tire of Dementis' vehicle, then was strung up and forced to watch Praetorian Jack dragged to death and decided to rip her own arm off or cut it off, unclear. I thought uh, she chewed it off personally. Yeah, chewed it, could, it off it like whatever. Way. Decided to chew it off <laughs> mm-hmm. and then escape, even while Dementis is literally right there in front of the vehicle. Because they're blowing up dust everywhere and you yeah. so, hide in dust. So cool. Yeah, so yeah. cool. And but that's also like, like a pretty badass thing. <laughs> pretty yeah. badass. That she whole sequence what, was just she like did 127 hours on her, <laughs> yeah. her own arm. Yeah, you know? in like Furiosa, 15 minutes. Yeah. And like, <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted her to have a win by that point because I yeah. love the relationship between her and Praetorian Jack, which is he's just like, oh, you're. You're interesting. And his his like sort of awareness that I could do something good here. You know, we live in a hellhole. I am supporting a warlord essentially just to exist, but my parents were heroes. Maybe I could be a bit of a hero too. And I love that. And they even they have a bit of a like an intimate relationship together. It's never like they never kiss. It's never like overly romanticized. Yeah, but I, it I is like that it is not an explicitly romantic relationship. You know, it's but I very, think it is yeah. absolutely when she goes back for him. Like that is the most romantic thing I've ever seen. You know, that's like true love shit. Yeah, right I don't know about there. romantic, but I would say I would agree with you that there's love there for sure. There's you know, love there. There's love. I don't know that it's romantic love, but I, I yeah, it's that that was a very cool relationship. Also, uh, going back to that scene where she rips her own arm off. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, that is my favorite shot of the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, not not the ripping the arm off, but the the lead up to it. It's all done in one shot. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. After, after they crash, and then like uh, Dementis drags them out of the vehicle, and then starts like dragging Jack around the thing. Like that's all one shot. That was mm-hmm. like my favorite filmmaking flourish. Incredible. Of the movie. Yeah. The, the fact that there's all these motorcycles yes. going around, and he's weaving. He climbs up on the thing, yeah. and there's still, and the, the dude has to. You know, the actor ha- yes. has to be pulled and then dragged. Yes. And it's just it's an incredible man. It's that incredible. Was, and it's very low key. Like, it doesn't call attention to itself yeah. as one long shot. But, it, like, after a while, you notice, oh, they're doing this in one shot. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. That was my favorite shot of the movie, honestly. Um, a, a lot of the, you know, there's some really cool, uh, they can fly now? They can fly now. Well, uh, they used you know. <laughs> to fly. Road Warrior introduced, like, they had the single man, the helicopter dude. And he was like a little friend. So there was aerial stuff before. Right. And we kind of lost that a bit in Fury Road. So like, yes, they can fly now. But also that shot. Talk about a lean in moment, right? Like you are behind the rig and then you see the dudes and then camera goes up. 
<laughs> camera goes up and just follows it and everybody in the theater and you too dave we're just like we're just like leaning like oh, he's doing so it. sick he's doing it he's going up and the camera goes up <laughs> yep. and then back down dude that yep. whole sequence so is just masterful mm -hmm. the 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 fact that we aren't set up with her being underneath the yes. rig mm -hmm. that it's just we just get down below the rig and there she is and we don't know the details but it's okay because we figure it all out it's all revealed and then later minutes later we see her tethered to a line under there like we put it together there's so much confidence in the audience mm -hmm. trust in the audience to come with you and to get these things and pick yep. up on the visual stuff it's all well thought out but it's not spoon fed to the audience and it's yeah, just that was so one of good. my favorite moments uh i was telling devinger on the car ride home right uh well, first of all, like something happens and then all mm -hmm. of her shit falls out the bottom of the car. And, and yeah. you know, you, you, cause she's packing all these supplies, all her food for her all escape. Her so all her food falls out and then she's just kind of chilling under there. And then at one point her friend mm -hmm. like falls out the bottom and you can tell he's going to die. And like, he sees her and he has a moment to kind of comprehend what is going on and yeah. then like hands her the tube. And then she puts and, it in her mouth and then he like go. And I was like, so I just love rad. that moment when they like so connect, rad. like no words. They just have a moment of recognition, and it's just like, oh, that's a, so. That's, so that's a lot of Mad Max Fury Road, by the way. It's two characters yes. looking at each other, no words. They connect, and they understand each other, and then they move mm -hmm. on. You know, like, yep. I love action that. as dialogue. Yeah, yeah. action love as it. dialogue. Love Silent it. movie stuff. Like that's something like George Miller has been trying to do since the first Mad Max, and it's fascinating to see him do it here, and also to be like, this is just this is classic filmmaking too. Like a lot of the visual language here is silent movie stuff. But it's still so good yeah. because we're used to faster cuts and things that just feel not as clear as yeah. action scenes. Yeah. And and so many of the things that he just lets you see, like, for example, the um, the the little metal testicles on the back of the, of yeah. the thing that mm -hmm. are just hanging there. And we know that they put on this this weapon in the back. We don't know exactly how it works. <laughs> they reference it a couple what times. It's, yeah. Do. Yeah. it's just sitting there. It's just like, do the thing. It's it's uh, Chekhov's metal testicles, you know? <laughs> well, it's kind of this thing too where uh, they, they build up to this, like we're going to build this war rig. And then you look at the war rig from Mad Max Free Road. It's way shittier. And it's like, <laughs> what happened to the uh, bulldozing arm? And what happened to the <laughs> testicles in the that back. Was also a it was like a double decker. There were like two tankers to it or something. Well, right, that, it right. had a trailer long. with, yeah. it was just more gas guzzoline. More guzzoline. More gu so it, it, you had to, you had to switch out some of the defense to add yeah, more guzzoline. Yeah. But, but also, um, but like, this is like, this is like the prequel question where like, why was the technology so much more advanced than Phantom Menace compared to, you know? Well, anyway, I also, I think <laughs> it's, it's perfectly plausible yes. that the, the rig that Furiosa drives in Fury Road it, there was they were not intending it to get into conflict it had mm -hmm. like she she mm -hmm. steals that and takes it and that that causes the conflict right that's not well they are set upon by those marauders in the earth they do know, destroy yes. this rig but yes they may, destroy maybe the rig right now yeah. probably it's a like this, this is the thing that furiosa the movie does is it introduces the politics of this world yeah. and like how there's different factions and different people run these factions and my sense is by the time we get to fury road it's a time of relative peace in Immortanjo's kingdom. And Dementis is gone, right? Mm -hmm, and so right. it's like Immortanjo probably runs everything yeah. at this point, right? So gas gas is it Bullet Town or Gas Bullet Town? Gas Town? Bullet, Bullet Town and Gas Town. Or gas the Town. Bullet Farm and Gas Bullet Town. Bullet Farm. Oh, Bullet yeah. Farm yeah. and but, Gas Town were in Fury Road and we get glimpses of them. Well, but well they're mentioned the thing. In, yeah. they're mentioned and we actually go there in, in these yeah. move in this But movie. the people from there do come at like start part of the chase yeah. in Fury Road. Oh, dude, like one of the coolest things is Especially yeah, seeing the people watched, again. Watched the movie. Seeing the people. Like, yeah. you, you see the organic mechanic show up, and he's working for a different guy. Yes. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and he looks younger. And I was yeah. like, oh, what? what's this about? You know? That was cool. Seeing Rictus again, you know? Yeah. Seeing Rictus. He's in this movie. Uh, see, seeing the dude who just, <laughs> Morton Joe's, like, uh, I don't know, relative who has the nipples open. Yeah. Like, nipple guy the is there again. Nipple, nipple guy know? there. And they're, they, in fact, nipple clamp even, guy. <laughs> pay off the nipple clamps because for some reason Dementis clamps the bomb or clamps the trigger to his nipples and gets ripped out. Talk about like <laughs> that scene serves no purpose. It's just like, well, Chris Sermons <laughs> is like, this would be funny. Dementis would clamp it to his nipples. That's what he would do. But of course, when that happens and his nipples get ripped off and we see that it's very gross. Nipple shirt guy is just like, Ooh, <laughs> Ooh, I know how I know that hurts. That's actually my worst nightmare. 
The, the other thing that's funny to me is that we get an entirely new Immortan Joe son. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this guy's not surviving this movie, <laughs> right? Because we don't see him in the next one. Yeah. Uh, Scr Scrotus, right? I think Scrotus. Yeah. Scrotus, right. what a name. The guy who should have been played by Walton Goggins, by the way. Like, I was what like, a Goggins yeah. alike. Half yeah. a second thought it was him. Should have been Goggins. So did did Scrotus die in this film? I forget. I don't believe he does. We don't see him in Fury Road. So really? He's not in Fury Road, but I feel like between the movies, he dies. Really? I don't I thought, think he dies. I think he might die in Fury Road. I'm not sure. Like, he might die early on in Fury Road. I'm I not, just I'm don't not, remember seeing not him. Not him. Have, the two sons yeah. in Fury Road are the big shirtless dude and then the little guy the little in the yeah. chair. Yeah. Those are the two sons yep. that he has. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's, I, mean, I mean, hey, I totally time passed. Wrong, time passed between this and Fury Road. Yes. Before we end this episode, I just want to... What the hell? I cannot believe that he did it at the end of this movie. I had an inkling that this movie would end with um, cut to the beginning of Fury Road and you see Charlie's back or cut to the end of Fury Road. Charlie's is back, ready to continue her journey. But what this movie does is essentially be like, no, 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 no. It's, it's Anya Taylor-Joy now. Anya Taylor-Joy is now Furiosa all the way through Fury Road, essentially. Like, it redoes Fury Road. Like, it's implying her character has been through that. So the next movie that will be the sequel to Fury Road will star Anya Taylor-Joy. If it gets to Potentially. I didn't, I didn't cool. get yeah. that. Yeah. I, I did think it was kind of audacious and bizarre that mm -hmm. the end credits is, like, the greatest hits of the movie that right. came out yeah. Yeah. seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that but it, it what it does is it's like hey, these it hands events it off. lead directly yes. well, to she, what happened there. We yeah. see her leading the the wives out. Yeah, like we right. see Anya Taylor Joy doing it. That's essentially setting up like, oh, I am doing this stuff in what is Fury Road in a way. So that's how I read it. Is that Anya yeah. Taylor Joy though? I don't think we see that character's face. Yeah, I agree. We don't yeah. see that character's face. I yeah, I think I'm it's not, just yeah. a handoff to the next movie. It's just yeah. it's just passing. The it's torch a handoff, to the next but movie. also Charlize is uh, probably this. You know, Fury Road was made. Almost 15 years ago at this point. So yeah. it's going to be tough for Charlie. It could have like been a look like, you know? Yeah. Uh, also, by the way, Mad Max shows up in this movie. That's another Just thing. A, hey, uh, that, that is guy. wild. That was wild. <laughs> He's up there. Uh, there is a credited actor mm -hmm. playing Mad Max in this movie. So, you know, he mm. just shows up for like a second. Believe, are we to believe that he saves her? Unclear. I don't think so. Because what I, you see her walking towards the citadel, and then she kind of mm -hmm. collapses, and you see Mad Max watching her. Yeah, and then the next and then scene, she's cut okay. Two, then she's there. there. Yeah, and she's there. That's but then she's like, there we... with the cannibals. So I almost yeah. feel like the cannibals found her, and we're I like, "Oh, you're know. coming to I, our I, lair it now." Seemed to me those guys pretty... are cannibals, by the way. Those those the, 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 those are medicinal people. They're they're, they're using the eating... maggots to eat off uh, dead skin off those people. This is true, but they're also eating people, or at least from what I saw. Yeah. I don't know about it. It's, it's kind of both. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like putting Mad Max between those two shots kind yeah. of led me to believe yeah. that he had some agency in that. Yes. You're that not the first the person that, there. like, we were talking about that in the car ride home, too. Is like, is that, did that happen? But unclear. Unclear. Yeah. Unclear. So, in my opinion. All right. Anyway. Which uh, would be weird. Honestly, it would be a little weird if he, like, later on doesn't recognize doesn't I don't know. It'd be a lot of weird. I mean, you know, know. She, she is older by then. Who knows? Yeah, I guess. I'll say one last thing about this, and I know we got we to gotta mm -hmm. transition the out of this. The woman I saved had two arms. <laughs> Sorry, go, Dave. I yep. think um, the reason they mm. put that, the, the, the ending of this movie there, with her confronting Dementis and then mm -hmm. and then saving the, the breeders is, like, this is my interpretation interpretation my wife doesn't agree with this but I, I was thinking like oh she has the ability to choose brutality revenge and so on um that's kind of what dementis challenges her to do you know he's like hey mm -hmm. you, you you could be just like me you could you could run this place basically if you wanted to and she deliberately rejects that path right that's that's what the ending of this movie is is her we don't know well she deliberately rejects that path because she's like i'm not gonna become like dementis i'm going to instead First of all, become a double agent in Immortan Joe's organization mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then use my channel my rage into helping these people. That's sure. the, that was my interpretation of the ending. Um now people might feel differently, including my wife. She has a totally different read. I, I think I think you could kind of do both because that's essentially the Mad Max thing of like, you know, the end of the first movie, his family is slaughtered. What does he do? He kind of goes down the road of being just as vicious as the marauders, you know, out there. And that's right. the end of the movie. That's like Right. Your hero did not find redemption. He, in fact, sets up a saw trap. Once again, back to saw two for one of the villains to like either, 
either what was it cut your foot off cut your arm off um or you'll be blown up right so he is not even fully saved those movies are about him trying to regain that humanity and trying to be a hero so i don't i don't, yeah i don't know if it's fully clear if Furiosa doesn't do it because it the movie leaves it ambiguous that she could have done it some people would have liked her to be more vicious or maybe she did do the thing we don't well, know what do you mean in between the events of the movies is what you're saying or no i like... mean to what she did to dementis it's like oh, oh oh i see i see i see i see you don't know if she but... walked away but also part of the narration is like some also say there is a tree here and planned here, planted right. here. Can- and canonically, it, like, Dementis, during the events of Mad Max Fury Road, Dementis is still suffering in agony in the Citadel. Could be suffering in agony and a tree growing out of him. Who knows? But to me, that seems a little more fantastical in a way. Yeah. Well, I think, I think, it, yeah, that it plays like a, uh, this is too fantastical to yes. be true. Like yes. this, this is the myth of what happened mm-hmm. instead of the, truth of what happened i think it could happen in this universe but that's me uh, but, so I mean, why who knows? Everyone but, have that's, interpretation yeah so. i think but, but i think it's meant to be in, intentionally vague you know mm-hmm. intentionally uh up to interpretation well at the end of the day it is incredibly impressive that george miller not only made this movie but is still making movies at the ripe so age of 79 please, years please old. don't wait keep so doing long it. Do please not don't wait stop. so long before keep the next doing one. it yeah bring it keep, keep them coming bring it yeah indeed Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash filmpodcast where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible. 